We are back on a Friday, September the 18th. Thank you so very much for listening in. And we're delighted to have Amy Pykoff join us. Amy is the chief policy officer for the free speech platform called Parler. And we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook and what they call a climate change information center. Apparently, it's supposed to be there to to give us the facts on climate change, if indeed we can find any. Uh, Amy, welcome to Freedom Works. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me on this morning. Absolutely our pleasure. So, can we trust Facebook to figure out what are the facts about climate change? In fact, can we can we trust anybody? I often wonder if anybody really knows what is going on with climate change, but they've come up with a, an info center. Tell us a little bit about it. Right. So Facebook, in the tradition of having various information centers about COVID, about voting, about other things, has decided they now need a climate change information center as well. And, you know, to me, it's just this tradition of Facebook using its power to tell us what it should think, I mean, excuse me, what we should think, and to whom we should listen on very important issues. You know, you had asked, can we trust Facebook? And the question really is, should we trust anybody else to do our sifting of information and our thinking about that information for us? Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. I agree with you. And um, I guess it's inevitable that um, Facebook and some of these other um, internet uh, chatting services tend to become a little bit, it's like anything else, one, they tend to become a little bit more powerful than maybe they should become, the people that run it. And then all of us, and you know, Google, same thing. And all of a sudden they start manipulating things. They start manipulating things. And, um, and people start to wonder, you know, about how objective they are. Maybe it's impossible ever to be totally objective, you know, and on the internet, Let's be honest, you know, everybody kind of takes political sides, I guess, once you start talking about politics. But I, well, I yeah. go ahead, go ahead, please. No, I was going to say, well, it, it, it really depends, you know, what you consider to be objectivity, right? So does it mean that you're never going to make any mistake when you try to apply, say, a moderation policy? And I've, I've started to, as in working for Parler, appreciate some of the problems that could come up, right, um, where you do need to remove certain types of content because it is actually criminal actions like threats or fraud or intellectual property violations or child pornography. These are things that must be taken down. And then there are certain things that a there are, you know, a rational business would go ahead and moderate as well. And those have to do with, say, unsolicited advertising, bots, and things like this. And to try to be as objective as possible with your content moderation policies is, is what you're always going to do. Are you going to make mistakes sometimes? Perhaps. But then are you going to use the fact that nobody can be mistake-free all the time as an excuse to bring in your personal ethical and political beliefs when you're making content moderation policies. That's the slippery slope that I think Facebook and Twitter and others have gone down and that we in Parler, we're doing everything we can to not do that in part, you know, by having a jury moderation. We have, we actually have a community jury doing moderation according to our very minimalist set of guidelines in order to avoid going down that path. Wow. And um, so they, what do they do? They convene on um, certain uh, topics, or how does that work? Well, so what happens is we'll get these violation reports from users, and then we have community jurors who will get to see the pieces of content, and we have a quorum system. So essentially, if there are four out of five jurors who say, yes, this person is guilty of posting actual fraudulent content, and by that we don't mean fact-checking the true-false stuff, but we mean defrauding people out of money, actual crimes, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so if you have four out of five of the jurors who give you a guilty verdict, it's a violation. And depending on what it is, the content will be taken down. And then, of course, various violation points assigned to it. If any two out of the five jurors will say not guilty, then we say, okay, it's a not guilty verdict. But we put as much as possible into that system to try to, you know, achieve the most objective results possible. We think it is the best you can do. But the fact that human beings are fallible doesn't mean that you give up on that goal and you don't hold human beings to a standard of infallibility or any system designed by human beings to a standard of infallibility. Right. You put checks and balances in and everything and you do your best. So back to Facebook and this Climate Change Info Center. This is a very divisive topic. Obviously, Democrats are jumping on board the whole concept of doing something about climate change. I've never heard a specific plan that is rational on it. Uh, you know, it, it involves many, many years and many, many billions, if not trillions of dollars to somehow fix things. And then we've got Republicans that go, yes. You know, the climate is changing. I don't know how much humans are changing it. And even if they are, you've got to sacrifice the th the good things that um, humanity is getting from some of the products that may indeed, uh, you know, so we go back and forth. So having said all of that with the uh, info center, um, what do we do about it? How do we how do we know there's going to be any kind of how are they going to keep politics out of this thing? Well, you know, I, I don't think that you can actually keep politics out of climate change. Are you asking how to keep politics yeah. out of Facebook? No, no, out of this or this info center, basically. Uh, how are we going to know the truth? Nobody knows. You know, it's like the ongoing science is always searching for a truth, but never completely getting you know, that's why science keeps going, because we're always searching at every, you know, we're finding out more and more and changing our opinions about this, that, and the other thing. So with climate change, would it not be the same way? Well, we, we don't really know. Uh, I, and so the Info Center, I guess we can say, well, four out of five scientists say this, and the other scientist <laughs> says that, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, Facebook is, t yeah, Facebook is taking it upon itself to tell you, and this is the words that they use in their press release, what, quote, science-based information is. And they also tell, or, you know, purporting to tell you who are the leading climate change organizations. That is also their language. So what I see them doing is they are picking the information that they believe you should listen to and in effect, they're appealing to authorities on this. You know, science, everybody uses the word science. New York Times this morning was talking about how Trump's advice is counter to what, quote, scientists say. So there's the appeal to science we have these days. Just another version of the old Aristotelian fallacy of appeal to authority applied to these issues. Uh, the climate change issue is very controversial. Some of the policies that are promoted by Mark Zuckerberg and others, you know, this kind of net zero emissions and all of that, it is a policy that's going to disproportionately affect the poor. Now, I don't believe that we have a particular moral duty to the poor. I'm more libertarian objectivist along those lines, right? But certainly, if you're thinking about what you're going to do about climate change and then you're going to impose these draconian policies that are going to disproportionately affect the poor, affect third world developing countries, et cetera. You need to rethink that. You know, what is the human cost? Just like the lockdowns, the COVID lockdowns, what has been the toll in terms of human prosperity of those lockdowns? Similarly, what about the various climate change policies? Indeed. We're talking with Amy Pikoff. She is the chief policy officer of the free speech platform called Parler. And we're talking a little bit about Facebook's new climate change information center. Amy, we we can't really, we don't know where the truth is coming from. You And you mentioned it's somewhat libertarian. Let's take on that responsibility individually, you know. Uh, look look and, and think for yourself. 
And when you hear that all the scientists say one thing, well, all the, we know that all the scientists don't say one thing. I've had a, I've had a guy on over the years that um, is a libertarian scientist and absolutely convinced me that the human effect on the change of the climate is minuscule, absolutely minuscule, you know, and he and he could come up with data and uh, and I would walk away totally convinced. However, I'm sure there's another scientist that could send me in the other direction. So we have both sides going on here, and I, I'm not sure. I mean, can we go anywhere for the truth in this, do you think? Well, I mean, where you're supposed to go for the truth at the end is, your own mind, right? And that's the thing that Parler is centered on, is that we believe you should be able to look at all information that's being offered out there. You should judge critically for yourself. You shouldn't have a social media company holding your hand and telling you what has been fact-checked according to whatever their fact-checkers are and everything else. In other words, you should think for yourself. You should think critically. You shouldn't depend on other people to do your thinking for you. Now, it's, when, with something like climate change or medical advice or anything else, we are often relying on experts, but then individuals are not left helpless. They can look at the credentials of the experts, they can look at any signs that what the expert is saying doesn't make sense. It isn't internally self-consistent. It happens to be pushed perhaps by a political entity that is funding them or otherwise has influence over them. People can be also critical about their experts and what they're getting from their experts. And we can demand that our experts explain things to us in a way that we can understand it, that we can evaluate. So, uh, you know, for us at Parler, we are sick of these, what we call techno-authoritarians, telling us what we should think, what we're able to see and consider and view. Look at, for as much information as possible about those issues that truly affect your life, and then you take action according to your own best yeah. judgment. Yeah, sounds very very rational and smart. Now, in addition to this climate change center, they got a information center for COVID-19, don't they, at Facebook? And then, uh, God forbid, they got one on voting information. I'm kind of worried about all of these things. I wonder when people go to these things, they go, oh, yeah, okay, now I understand. You know? I mean, you know, Facebook presents things in a very beautiful, user-friendly way often, right? And because a lot of people have a lot of value around Facebook, you know, they connect with their friends and they share their cat pictures and everything else, they get the warm fuzzies about it. And I am concerned that sometimes they will lose their objectivity with respect to Facebook pushing various types of information and agendas on them. Indeed. Amy, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. I'm so glad you've got this parlor. How do people find out more about parlor? So come to parlor.com and as I said, everybody who wants to think for themselves, who does not want to have their content curated or who is worried that if they say something on Parlor that doesn't meet a corporate agenda that we're going to moderate them, we do none of that. There is no moderation based on viewpoint. All are welcome. So it's parlor.com or go to your app store, either on Google or iOS, and find us, P-A-R-L-E-R, Parlor. Terrific, Amy. Thank you so very much. Good luck to you.